Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to see how we can create a basic Python application using Flask framework. Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to see how we can create a basic Python application using Flask framework and how we can deploy the same application in Azure Bot Solution. So let's get started. So first and foremost, what is Flask? A Flask is a lightweight, flexible web framework for developing web applications and APIs. The key features that we are going to get from the Flask framework are URL routing, request handling, response generation, templating, and menu. In the upcoming videos, we will be going in detail about each of these key features. But in this video, we will be mainly focusing on developing a basic application and hosting the application in Azure Web Solution. So the prerequisites for this demo are, we need to have Python and pip installed on our local machine, and we need to have Azure account for creating the virtual machine. So these are the steps that we are going to perform in this video. First one, let's create a sample Python application, and we'll be running and validating the endpoints on our local machine and then we'll be creating a virtual machine in azure cloud and we'll be opening the application port in the inbound energy rules in order to access our application from outside the azure and then we will be uploading the application files into the virtual machine and we'll be installing the required dependencies in order to run our application and We'll be running our application and accessing it through the public IP of the virtual machine. So let's get started with the first step. So I'm in the Visual Studio Code under Flask App Directory. So let me create app.py file. Yeah. So since we want to develop a Python application using Flask framework, we need to install Flask in our local machine. So for that one, let me open the terminal here, new terminal, and let me go to the command point. So in order to install any Python packages, we will be using Python package manager called pip. So now we will be, we want to install Flask. So that's the reason we will be using pip3 install flask command this will install the flask in our local machine so let's hit enter so you can see i'm getting requirement already satisfied this is because i have already installed flask in my local machine but in your case if you don't have flask installed in your local machine if you run pip3 install flask command this will install flask and along with that some other dependencies as well in your local machine right so now that we have installed flask in our local machine let's import flask in our application code for that one let's write from flask import flask so we have imported flask in our application code now let's create an instance of flask app equal to flask red underscore underscore name underscore underscore right so now we have created an instance of flask so using this flask instance let's create an endpoint at the rate app dot route decorator so we'll be using a route decorator for url mapping so we'll be using a root path here and we'll be defining a function. So let's name this function as root, right? You can name this function uh, with any name. Now I'm, I'll be using a root and let's return some response, right? So I want to return a JSON object as a response. So in order to return a JSON object, I need to import a method called JSONify, JSONify. So I'm, importing this jsonify let's use this jsonify in order to return a json object as a response 
so I'll be writing a key as message colon and the value is hello from flask right so this is the response that we are going to get whenever we hit this application on the root path so now we have imported flask and we have created the instance of flask and we have created the endpoint using the flask instance so let's proceed with the code that we'll be using in order to run our application now we'll be using if underscore underscore name underscore equal to score main underscore app dot run so this is the code that we will be using in order to run our application so this is the a general pattern that we are going to use in our flask framework or flask applications so this ensures that our python development server will only run whenever we uh, run this script directly right so since we execute this script directly so this condition will hold true and we will be running this app dot run will be executed and our application will be up and running so let's um, pass few parameters here they are debug equal to true host equal to 0 .0 0.0.0.0 make sure keep that course and let's say we want to run our application on 80804 right so we are enabling this debug this is because um, we don't need to stop and start our application if you want to make any changes since we have enabled this debug um, if we make any changes to our application code the python development server will automatically pick the updated code and it will run so there is no need for us to stop the application make the changes and restart the server again it will be done automatically and we are keeping the host as 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 this makes sure that we can access this application from anywhere and we are mentioning the port as 8080 so that our application will be up and running on port 8080 so since we have included all the required code so let's save the code and let's run the application so in order to run this application we will be using python and the name of the file let's say app.py and we enter so now you can see our application is up and running let's take this endpoint and go to the browser here's this one and click on enter so now you can see we are getting the response so since we are hitting the application on the root path so we are getting the hello from class response so the response that we are getting is from this function right so our application now is up and running and we are able to access our application in our local version so now let's see how we can deploy the same code in azure virtual machine and how we are going to access it hello everyone Today in this video, currently we are going to see Azure how we portal can for creating on application using Flask framework. So if you are not sure how to land on this page, you can search for virtual machine here and then click on virtual machine and you will be landing on this page. So we will be providing few details for creating a virtual machine in Azure. So here we will be providing the resource group. So this is the resource group I have already created earlier. So I'm going to use the same resource group uh, for this demo. And if you want to create your own uh, resource group for creating this virtual machine, you can click on this create link. So if you are not sure what is a resource group in Azure, it's like a logical container where you can place your Azure resources inside a specific resource group right so most of the resource in azure will reside uh, under this resource group itself right so let's 
uh, give a name for our virtual machine uh, we'll be using flask iphone uh, web app right and we'll be providing the HTTPS and we'll be using ubuntu server and we are specifying the standard underscore b1s uh, uh, machine type we are going with the default one and here we are providing the authentication type as a uh, password instead of uh, ssh public key so i'll be using user admin uh, as a username and user admin at the rate one two three as a password user admin at the rate one two three so i have provided the username and password and i'm opening the port uh, as uh, ssh port 22 in order to ssh into this virtual machine that we are creating so we need to open this 22 port this is a mandatory step so if you don't open this port 22 we cannot ssh into the virtual machine so yeah so we have created we have given all the configuration so i'm providing all the uh, networking disk management details everything as it is i'm going with the default one so let me click on review and create the so it will uh, take some time and it will validate uh, all the configurations that we have created so you can see it is running the final validation so you can see the validation has passed and i'm clicking on create button so this will create a virtual machine and it will take around one to two minutes to create the virtual machine in azure So the virtual machine has created. Um, you can click on go to resource to navigate into the virtual machine page. And you can see Flask iPhone web app. This is a virtual machine that we have created that is in demo underscore RG resource group. And uh, this is, you can see the machine type operating system. And this is the public IP that is assigned to this virtual machine. Uh, so let's copy this public ip so we need this public ip in order to ssh into this virtual machine so uh, in order to ssh into the machine you can use uh, putty mobile xterm or command line tool so you can use anything uh, i'm using mobile xterm you can you can use putty as well so i'm into the mobile xterm and i'm clicking on the session ssh and i'm pasting the ip address this is the public ip address of the virtual machine i'm specifying the uh, username so this is the username we have given while creating the virtual machine and the port 22 for ssh the machine so click on ok and it will ask for the password so we have given user admin at the rate one two three as the password click on enter and click on yes so now you are into the virtual machine so this is the virtual machine name that we have created and this is the user name that we are using in order to ssh into the machine so let's type sudo su so we are into the using the user as a root privileges uh, so let's check whether the python is installed in this virtual machine or not for that one uh let's type python 3 hyphen hyphen version you can see python is installed uh, that is 3.8.10 version uh, let's see if the pip3 is installed or not pip3 hyphen hyphen version so you can see pip3 is not found uh, why do we need pip3 pip3 is a python package manager so in order to install the flask and other dependencies for our application to run in this virtual machine we will be using pip3 command in order to install those dependencies right so now the pip3 is not installed so let's install pip3 in this virtual machine so before installing pip3 let's update all the packages in the virtual machine so for that one we'll be using apt-get update so it will update all the packages in this virtual machine
yeah it's done uh, now we have updated all the packages so let's install pip3 now so for that one we'll be using apt install python3 hyphen pip so this is a command we'll be using in order to install uh, pip and it will so this operation will take around 228 mb of this uh, disk space so type yes and click on enter it will install pip3 in this virtual machine Okay, now you can see pip3 is installed. It's, it took around one minute uh, to install pip3. Uh, let's check whether pip3 is installed in this machine or not. So pip3 hyphen hyphen version. So now you can see pip3 is installed, right? So now let's uh, so let's go to the documentation that we have uh, used earlier. Here, if you see, uh, we are we we have created a sample Python application. We have validated the endpoints in our local machine. We have created the virtual machine, and the next step we have to do is to open the application port in the NHG rules, right? So for that one, let's go to the uh, portal itself uh, in the virtual machine page. You can see networking under the settings tab. So if you Click on the networking. You can see all the NSG inbound rules. So you can see 22 port as well. We have added in order to SSH into the machine. So now let's add our application inbound port as well. So this is the mandatory step in order to access our application, right? So uh, we have we are running our application on port 8080 so that's the reason i'm uh, adding the destination port as 8080 if you are running your application on any other port other than 8080 so you can mention the same port number uh, in the destination port ranges and if you come down uh, the action is hello and hello any custom this is the name of the uh, inbound security rule that we are giving click on add this will add the security rule it will take around 10 seconds. Um, yeah, you can see uh, the security rule as added. Um, so let's refresh this page. So now you can see port 8080 has been added uh, to the inbound security rule for our emission, right? So the next step is we need to up upload all our uh, application port into this virtual machine so for that so reason like I'm, I'm going to create a separate directory so currently i have uh, no directories under this path so let me create a directory mkdir a flask hyphen app so let me provide the ownership ch own hyphen r user admin colon user admin class app so i'm providing the uh, ownership for this user on this directory so in order to upload a files into this directory so this user has the permission like he, he has to have the permissions to upload the files so i'm going to paste all the same path here flask iphone app so you can see there are no uh, files so let me upload the files here you can see this is the uh, app that we have created earlier so you can see it is uploading now if i type cd flask you can see application app.py has been added so now let's uh, install flask in this virtual machine pip3 install 
flask you can see flask is getting installed so now it's installed so let me uh, run the application so in order to run the application we have to use python app dot py sorry we need to use python 3 python 3 app dot py so now you can see our application is running so you can grab the uh, public ip address of this virtual machine so let me grab the virtual machine's public ip so let me copy the ip address of the virtual machine so this is the ip address of the virtual machine and paste the ip address in the browser with the port 8080 if you click on enter you can see we are getting the response from the application that we have deployed in virtual machine so we have successfully able to deploy our python application in azure virtual machine but deploying the production grade application in azure virtual machine is not at all recommended so if you want to deploy any production grade applications in azure the services you might have to leverage are azure web app and azure kubernetes services so in the next video we are going to deploy the same application in azure web app and see what are all the benefits we are going to get if we deploy the application in azure web app over deploying the application in virtual machine thank you